We've done a lot in the last previous videos of a number of parameters, hyperparameters, and in this video we're going to try to consolidate almost all of them uh, and also introduce Adam, uh, one of the newest optimizers. So what have we looked at? Well, we've looked at one, two, five, and we're going to look at all of those again quickly to see what hyperparameters we need. And you get the idea that it's almost like a tsunami of hyperparameters. If I were to ask you which hyperparameter would you focus on if you only had one, you all now know that that would be the learning rate. Let's look at the first one, network architecture search. Well, one of the main problems is building an architecture. And that was very, used to be, and still is, very time consuming. Um, so Microsoft has developed this new platform called Petri Dish. It's rather new. There's a reference there, December 9th, 2019. You can look it up. Network architecture search, of course, is at a high level design and then percolates down. So what task do you need? What learning do you need? What type of network do you need? And those are all tightly coupled, making the problem difficult and time consuming. We need to initialize the weights once we have the architecture. And we need to have the activation functions. We need to do some initialization as we saw before. So there's a lot to do. And what we're trying to do in this video is combine all these hyperparameters. So our network architecture search is still a work in progress and very time consuming. We looked at SGD. There are different types. So take all the data. And for each iteration, use all the data for update. That's going to be very time consuming and is only useful for small data sets. A mini batch of size one, just do one data sample at a time, gives you a very rough descent trajectory. Standard mini batch. People say if you go over 32, you're going to be in trouble. So I say pick it at 32, rarely 64. 32 seems to be optimal. If the gradients blow up, we'll have to introduce our gradient clipping parameter as we discussed previously. Now, let's look again at momentum. Well, we saw that the momentum parameter is usually set to 0.9. And there's a great paper written by Sutskever et al. on the importance of initialization and momentum in deep learning. And note that the momentum parameter can change as we navigate through the loss function surface. The navigation depends on the local service curvature. Which leads us to ADAM, standing for Adaptive Moment Estimator. It computes running averages of gradients, uh, first moment or mean, and running averages of the second moment of gradients, which is the uncentered variance, caution. ADAM is complicated. Sometimes ADAM works worse than classical SGD. Here's the basic atom update. It looks kind of similar to basic momentum, but the, the point is, for example, the first one is the, the gradient weighting. So it's the previous value of the first moment. This is this gradient update, and this is a, a moving average. And the same with V. So you have to compute these as you go. Here are the choices for the hyperparameters 0.9 and 0.999. They're usually not normally changed. Now, once we have this, there's a few fiddles we have to do. It's not just like in ordinary momentum.
The estimators are biased, with the main biasing effect beginning at, at starting with the beginning of the training. This is the fact that uh, beta 1 and beta 2 tend to, and that's a typo with a G, tend to zero as T increases. We correct the biases to get M hat and B hat, and there's the update. Wow. Well, if you look at the update formula, it has the learning rate there. That's good. Well, where's the gradient? Well, that's M. It's a moving average of the gradient, so it's a smoothed out gradient. What about square root of VT? And that should be VT squared. Uh, is that right? No, VT, sorry. So that's not a typo. It is VT because VT has the gradient squared, so it's positive. And the square root of the gradient squared plus epsilon, so you don't divide by zero, is what? It's the norm of the gradient. So if you think the gradient squared is dot product, it's Euclidean distance, but smoothed out Euclidean distance. So if you think about it in a higher level, what do you have in the ratio? Gradient divided by the norm of the gradient. Both of them are smoothed out as you go. So if I was to ask, what is that ratio mean geometrically? It's a smoothed out unit vector. Wow. And we saw that before. So it really nails the directions. And that's why Adam could work really, really well, as long as things are pretty smooth. Hopefully the smoothing will get rid of bumps as you go. So this is actually a very interesting way to do the update. And uh, Adam is one of the most intense areas of investigation in optimizers in neural networks. Here it is. Oh, I made a mistake here. This is the worst typo I've done. Forget about probably. Big X. It's not probably. I did that on purpose, obviously. It is the most important hyperparameter in the learning rate. And as we mentioned before, misbehaviors of the gradient, and they're listed for you there, can all mess things up. So the mess up is due to the second derivative Hessian matrix behaving badly in high dimensional spaces. Suggestion here in Keras, use the learning rate schedule, scheduler to start with. It is not always obvious which activation functions you should use. Depends on the following. What's the learning task? What's the architecture? What's the loss function? Is it entropy? Is it mean squared error? So we can choose from those three listed. And I'm going to focus on ReLU. So we've already seen basic ReLU. The problem with ReLU is it's flat, then it goes like that. So when you're taking the derivative and z is less than 0, you get 0. So you could get possibly what we call a dead neuron for negative values of z. So what you can do, and you can draw the pictures as an exercise, you can not make it 0, but make it below 0 a little bit. So that's the case of leaky ReLU. Um, parametric ReLU, you define it looks like leaky ReLU A you have to learn. So it's another parameter. If you don't choose it, you learn it. And uh, another popular one for negative z is the exponential learning unit. So that's it for our discussion of all the hyperparameters or a great number of the hyperparameters that you need when you are setting up and training your neural network.